Okay, so now we're going to look a little bit more at some steps that were taken to solve equations. So if we look at number three, so this is the back side of the lesson four notes. So Mai and Noah also solved the equation, but some of their steps have errors. Okay, so this is the same equation that was done on 4.2 by Claire and Lynn. It says find the incorrect step in each solution and explain why it is incorrect. All right, so if, if we take a look at what Claire and Lynn did, both my and Noah seem to start with the same process on the left side of their equation by looking at these two steps and combining like terms. So these, these two steps for both of them are actually okay. So I'm going to put a little check mark there just so we, because we're going to go through and kind of check what they've done each step of the way. We don't have to write out what they did. However, the practice that comes with that is really, really helpful. So we're going to anyway. So from our original down to the first step, we have um, combine like terms. Let me zoom in here for you. Okay, so we have combined like terms happening on that first step. Now from this step here, let's check and see what happened. Now the left side changes and so does the right side. So let's take a look and see what my done, my, what my did and determine if it's mathematically correct. So on the left hand side, my three did not change, but 12 X became seven X. Now if she had divided something or multiplied something, both numbers would change. So because just the X is changed, then we know we're dealing with addition or subtraction of five X. So we're actually looking here that she removed five X from the left. So let's take a look and see if she did the same thing on the right side. Now, if you look here, the five X did disappear because now I've only got three times nine. This is showing an error. So there is an error on this step. You cannot just start pulling out numbers out of parentheses. Okay. If we take a look at what was actually supposed to happen here, the three was actually supposed to distribute to the five X and to the nine. This should be a distributive situation. So when she just eliminated this five X, she was wrong because when I distribute, it's actually supposed to be 15 X. So she should have distributed the three. That is not five X she's removing. She actually removed 15 X and didn't even realize it. There is your error. So I want you to make a note here. Make a note of the error and put like a box around it. That's a problem. Now, if we continue on, I mean, at this point, if you were grading this, it's wrong, done, whatever. But if we continue to look and see what she did, she actually, if this part was correct, she completes everything correctly. 
If you look here, um, she multiplies three times nine and gets 27. Then she removes a three on the left and on the right. So this step was actually correct, right? She added negative three to both sides. Then from this step to this step, she's actually correct too, because seven X becomes X, 24 becomes 24 over seven. She actually divides each side by seven. So mathematically, most of her steps are correct, but because she made an error up at the front, her answer is wrong. She's wrong because she made the mistake of just eliminating 5x here instead of distributing. So again, even though she started out good and then she ended mathematically correct, she's still technically, she's wrong. It's not 24 over 7. If we take a look back at Lynn, Lynn actually completed the step correctly. If we look here, she distributed the three and got 15 X plus 27. And if you look back at my, she got the 27, but it's 15 X plus 27. See, it should be 15 X plus 27. She did not have just 5x to remove. All right, let's take a look at Noah. Noah is also wrong. We've got to figure out where Noah went wrong. Okay. Now, with these equations, there are many, many ways to get to the correct answer. Just because a step was done that you would not have done doesn't mean it's wrong. Our job is to see, did they complete the math correctly? If they added something to one side, did they add the same thing to the other? If they multiplied or divided on one side, did they multiply or divide the same thing on the other? If they simplified, did they do the math correctly? So let's take a look at Noah. So the left side changed and the right side changed. So we've got to decide, did they do something to both sides? Um, if you look, the left side of Noah's first step actually looks like the same thing that everybody else has done so far. If you back up to my, she gets 12x plus 3. Yesterday, or in the front page, Claire gets 2x plus 3. Lynn gets, excuse me, 12x, 12x plus 3. So what Noah did over here by combining like terms, I'm just going to say CLT. What Noah did is actually mathematically correct over here, right? Combined these X's to get 12. If you look at the right side though, Noah actually distributed on the right-hand side. So Noah did some simplifying on each side all at once, which is totally, totally fine. Nothing wrong with that. So Noah just did some simplifying on each side and that's fine. Saves a little step. If you can keep track of everything, that's okay to do. So now let's see what happened on the next step. Now, if you are struggling because you're seeing everything all at once, Okay, you may want to use something to help kind of cover up what you're working on. You know, if, if you only want to focus in on the steps that we're, that we're looking at. Okay, so you may want to cover up um, everything but the two steps you're looking at. But on the left-hand side, my threes don't change, but 12x becomes 27. So because everything on that side didn't change, I know we're either looking at adding something to both sides or subtracting something. Same thing on the right-hand side. 
everything didn't change. My 27 actually stayed the same. And if it's hard to tell what happened on the left because there's a lot going on, look at the right. 27 stayed 27. This 15x is gone. So 15x was removed from the left from the right side. Was 15x removed on the left? If I have 12 and I remove 15, I do not get 27. If you look here, Noah added 15x on the left and Noah subtracted 15x on the right. Another way to think about it is he added a positive 15 on the left and a negative 15 on the right. You have to do the same thing on both sides. This is where the error is at. So the error is had to add 15x to both sides. Can't add 15x to one side and subtract 15x from the other. You have to do the same thing on both sides. You have to stay equal and even. Whatever you do on the left, you have to do on the right unless you're simplifying. If you were simplifying something like combine like terms or distribute, that's different because it's a simplification of an expression. If I add 15 X to one side and then take 15 off the other, my, my hangers are not balanced anymore. If I add 15 to the left, I have to add 15 to the right. However, just like my up above from here, Everything's actually mathematically correct. Noah removes three from the left and removes three from the right. Divides the left by 27, divides the right by 27. So the rest of it is actually mathematically correct, unfortunately for Noah. All right, the last part of the notes is 4.3, make your own steps. Solve these equations for x. Now there are many, many, many different ways to solve each equation. It's going to be up to you to decide how you want to solve these. I'm going to show you some efficient ways I'm going to try to talk you through some options that you have. But one thing to remember, so we're going to make going to make some notes here. Notes simplify first. One side at a time. Just like all of those problems that we just did with Claire and Lynn, Mai and Noah, they're all simplifying everything first. Usually, usually that's where you want, want to start. Okay. Not always, but that's what you want to look at first. Sometimes simplifying isn't going to be the most efficient process, but you should look at doing that first. The second thing is 
um, whatever operation you do to one side, you've got to do to the other. Keep the hanger balanced. What happens on one side has to happen on the other. If you add three to one side, you have to add three to the other side. If you add negative 10 X to one side, you have to add negative 10 X to the other. So once you start truly changing things mathematically, you have to keep the hanger balanced. All right, so let's look at number one. Now, um, the are you ready for more? You can scribble that out or you can do that on your own another time, but we're actually going to use the space underneath for 4.3. So number one. So recopy number one down. There is a lot going on here, okay? Um, and there are a lot of different ways that you can approach this. And feel free at any point, if, if, you, if I go through and complete a step and you would have done something different, try what you would do. We should both come up with the same exact value for X as long as we both did the math correct, you should get the same value of X that I did. So at any point in time, if something makes more sense to you, do it that way. As long as you're keeping everything balanced. So what I would do here is I would, I would try to simplify things first. For example, five minus nine is actually four. So I would rewrite this and it's negative four. I would rewrite like this. Well, I guess simplify, simplify is probably just better. I don't want to start saying subtract and then you're wondering why it's not happening on both sides. So now we still have the three and the two here. And I know fractions are, are things that, you know, make a lot of students nervous because you don't get a ton of practice. But remember too that for the most part, we're not going to give you anything that's like out of, out of control, especially at this point where we're still starting out and learning. So when you look at some of these, think and say, well, maybe there's a way to like, deal with these fractions quickly and easily. So if you look here, the left side is just saying 12 plus 6x divided by 3. Everything up here is actually being divided by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 6x divided by 3 is 2x. I can actually take this and simplify it. It's kind of like, you know, the distributive property, the numbers being multiplied by everything inside. In this case, everything up here is being divided by 3. And then on the right-hand side, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. and I just simplify it again. So I haven't done anything on both sides. I'm actually just taking the expression on the left and just trying to simplify it down to something that doesn't look crazy. And then I'm looking at the information on the right and simplifying down so it doesn't look crazy. Now I actually have something that, that, looks, that doesn't look too bad. 
Now we haven't, ha we haven't solved anything by ourselves yet. All we've done is look at what other people have done for steps and written out the things they did, identifying the steps that happened. So now that we're moving to doing this by yourself, you need to think in a way of our goal is to find what X equals. Okay, if we had a hanger, what would that hanger look like? Okay, so if we had a hanger, what would the hanger look like? So if I were to draw a hanger for this problem, so four plus two X minus two. So if I were to draw a hanger, excuse me, four plus two X equals negative two. So if I were drawing a hanger of this, I'd have four positive pieces and two X's, right? Then on this side, I would have two negatives. And it's balanced. So how, how are we going to deal with what we have here? How are we going to find our X's? I need to figure out what, what these X's equal. And there are options. Okay, if you look at the hanger, um, one option, if you look, you can see, I could break these into two groups, an X and two positives, an X and two positives, and break these into two groups. And so if I looked at it like this, I have an X plus two equals a negative one. Maybe from there, you could kind of see what to do. And, and all that happened was I divided by everything on the left by two, and I divided everything on the right by two. So if I look back at my equation, do you see how I can divide everything on the left by two, and I can divide the number on the right by two? So maybe that's what you want um, to do with your equation. Okay. Another option, if you didn't want to divide by two, so let's say we didn't want to do that, that feels complicated or whatever. I could look and say, okay, well, on my hanger, if I want to know my X's, I've got to get rid of these four positives. So to eliminate the four positives, I'm going to use four negatives. Because a positive and a negative cancel each other out, right? So the reason I do that is because if, if I have four positives, if I take four positives away from the left, I don't have any positives to take away from the right. That's why when I've been talking about subtraction, making things difficult, this is another example of that. If I take four positives from the left, I don't have any positives to take from the right. But if you think about it like this, a positive and a negative cancel, 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 cancel. So it's like putting them together, make them disintegrate almost. Well, if I put four negatives on the left, I've got to put four negatives on the right. Nothing is going to cancel because they're all negatives. So if you look and see what I have, I've got two X's over here. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six negatives. And what we did was we added four negatives to the left and four negatives to the right. So in my equation here, I could add negative four to the left and negative four to the right. So now what I want you to do is I want you to decide what are you going to do? Are you going to divide everything on the left and the right by two? Or are you going to add negative four to the left and add negative four to the right. 
So you decide what you're going to do. I'm going to show you both. So let's say the first part you want to divide by two. So if everything is divided by two, you're going to get two plus X equals negative one. I'm sorry. So now if we have two plus X equals negative one, let's come back and do, we can do a hanger for this. If you wanna see, like if that hanger helps you so if that hanger kind of helps, let me kind of get some paper here so we can see the hanger. So if you want to draw the hanger, I have two positives and one X. And on the other side, I've got a negative. So now the thing I did on the other hanger with the positives and the negatives are actually going to kind of come back here. So if I want to know about what what this X is, I've got to eliminate the two positives. So I'm going to pair them up with negatives. Those disintegrate, those disintegrate. Which means I'm going to add, if I added two negatives to the left, I need to add two negatives to the right. Once I match these guys up, I'm left with X equals negative three. So on my equation to the right here, I just write down what I did, negative two on each side. So I added negative two. Two plus negative two is zero, and all I'm left with is an X. Negative one plus negative two is negative three. Now, if this is the method you decided to use, that's good. I want you, I still want you to do the second option. If this is not the method that you wanted to choose, that's okay. We're going to do the other one, but I want you to copy this down anyway. I want you to have both so that you can see that either was an option in this case. Now the dividing by two, the only trick is if one of these numbers was odd, this might not have been the, the, the choice. And that's the thing about the choices. Sometimes the choices will be clear and it'll be obvious. Others is like this, where you actually truly do have multiple, different choices. Okay, so our other option, instead of dividing by two at this point, maybe you want to eliminate the four, kind of like, what I did with the blues. So eliminate four on the left and four on the right. Okay, so my other option again is what I did over here in the blue. So let me get rid of this. So I added one, two, three, four negatives to the left and four negatives on the right. So when I have my equation, I added four negatives to the left and four negatives to the right. Add negative four to each side. Four and negative four is zero, so I have two X on the left. If you look on the right, I've got negative two and negative four makes negative six. Now, if you want to look at this using the hanger situation, make a little room. So again, if you wanted to make this look like the hanger, I have two X's on the left and I have six negatives on the right. Well, I can't, like I can't take an X off the left and an X off the right. That doesn't really make sense. It'd be silly to add things. But if you look here, 
I could actually group these up. I can break this up into two groups and each group has X on one side and negative three on the other. So I could actually divide each side by two. Two divided by two, negative six divided by two. Right, so I could divide it up two on each side. And either way that I approach this, I get x equals negative 3. Now this method on the right is the more traditional method that you probably learned in seventh grade or that a teacher would show you because it can, will consistently work every time. This left side method, dividing by 2 from the beginning, it works out really nice here, but it dividing originally may not always work very easily every time. So keep that in mind. All right, now number two. So copy number two down. X minus four equals one third times the quantity six X minus 54. So we've got to decide how we're going to handle this. Earlier I said try simplifying first. And that doesn't mean that you have to simplify first, but that's something you should consider from the beginning. There's nothing I can really do on the left, but on the right, we, we've been distributing in a lot of the examples we've seen. So think about distributing one third. Remember, multiplying by one third is like dividing by three. So six divides by three evenly. How about 54? Does 54 divide by three evenly? It does. Okay, 54 divided by three is 18. So distributing this one third is actually a pretty good move to make for an equation like this. But think about what other options you have. What else could you do? Because eliminating that one third is a really good idea. Could you, could you have multiplied each side by three? Three times one third is one, so I could have multiplied each side by three also. If that sounds like something you'd want to do, go ahead and do it. See if you get the same answer as me. Just make sure that when you multiply the left side by three, everything gets multiplied. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to distribute the one third. So one third times six X minus one third times 54. Now you, you may be able to do this in your head, but I do want you to write it out like this because it's good to practice some fraction work. This is a negative 54 and it's actually going to stay that way because I still have this negative here. But if you remember how to work fractions, if you multiplied, you'd get 6x over 3. And that's going to simplify to 2x. 54 divided by 3 is 18. So we distributed here. Actually, we distributed right there. Now from here, if you go back and you take a look and see what some of the other problems how they were handled when they kind of look like this, where we had X's on both sides and we see like what people did that might help you decide what you would do. So on the other side of your paper, if we take a look and see what Claire did, 
right here, Claire has an X and a number, an X and a constant, X and a constant. And she removed 4X from each side. So she eliminated one of the X's on one side. Okay. Um, Lynn, here's this step here. Lynn eliminated the, the three from here and she eliminated a three from this side. Okay. You actually have options. You've got to get rid of something though. If there was something I could divide out of every, every part, I could do that kind of like in number one but I don't really have that option. So what you're going to do is you're going to decide, do you want, do you want to get rid of the X on the left, the negative four, the two X, the negative 18, you can actually get rid of whichever part you want. You just have to make sure whatever you do to the left, you do to the right. So for example, if I wanted to eliminate the X over here, well, it's a positive X, so I would use a negative X on each side to eliminate that. If I wanted to eliminate the negative four, I would add positive four to each side to eliminate that. Okay, if you think back to the hangers, let me get another piece of paper up here. If I were to draw this as a hanger, I have an X, and I have four negatives, right? And on this side, I have two X's and I'm not drawing 18, but I have 18 negatives over here. Now let me redraw this as four negatives. So I have an X on each side and I have four negatives here and I have 18 negatives here. So if you were to try to balance this hanger, do you see how you have options, right? I could remove an X from each side. I could take four of the negatives from here and four of the negatives from here. Now, if I tried to take these two X's, it would get weird because I don't have two over here. Mathematically, we can do it, but then it, the X's start becoming negative and it gets strange. So drawing a hanger actually is not a bad idea for some of these to kind of see how you would want to start working. So we're going to, we're going to eliminate an X from each side. So we're going to take an X off of each side. Now, remember, I can only combine X's with X's. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. This negative four stays. Two X's become an one X and I have my negative 18 still. So if I look at my little hanger here, I removed an X from here and an X from here. So now I have negative four on the left and X plus negative 18 on the right. So now if you look over on this side, I have an X. So if I cross those out completely, I have an X here, but it's sitting here with 18 of these negatives. I need to get rid of those. I need to take out those 18 negatives. The only thing it's hard to take away something that's already negative. So if I added 18 positives, 18 negatives, 18 positives cancel each other out. If I add 18 positives on the right, I've got to add 18 positives on the left. So these will cancel and I just have X and then I've got to do a little math for the left-hand side. So I'm going to write this on the equation. What I did on the hanger is going to happen on the equation. Okay. 
and I'm going to have to kind of go over to the right. So if I have negative 4 and positive 18, I actually end up with 14. Negative 18, positive 18 cancel, and I'm left with x equals 14. So again, once we get to this point where we've simplified everything, once we've simplified, use a hanger. Use the hangers to see, like, what would you do? If you're not seeing the math jump out at you, use the hangers. Okay, and then let's finally look at number three. Let me go back to red. All right, for number three... So we have a negative sign outside, 3x minus 12 in the parentheses, then 9x minus 4 on the right. Now, this looks maybe like something you've seen before, probably not. But we have seen numbers out front. We saw a fraction in number 2. We've seen numbers all throughout our examples. But I don't see a number here. If you remember all the different things you've seen in math over the last few years, if you don't see a number in front of a variable or under another number, there's always a one kind of creeping around. That's happening here too. There's actually a one in a one right here. This is actually negative one. So even though it doesn't look like anything really is happening other than just a negative sign hanging out, that's actually a negative one that can be distributed inside here. Negative one times three X is negative three X. Now remember, this is a negative 12. Subtracting 12 is the same as negative 12. Negative one times negative 12 is positive 12. And we distributed negative 1. And if you look, what's kind of interesting is when you have a negative sign out in front of your, um, you know, parenthesis operation here, look at what happened to the numbers inside. They actually became the opposite. Okay. So if we want to go back to the hanger scenario, let's draw a hanger of this. Except I'm not going to draw a bunch of pieces. We have negative 3x and I have got 12 on one side. And I have 9x and negative 4 on the other. And we need to start eliminating things so that we have x's on one side of of the hanger and the numbers only on the other side so think about what do you want to eliminate first if you wanted to eliminate the negative three x's i would have to add three x's to each side if i want to eliminate the nine x's i need nine negatives on each side if I want to eliminate the 12, I need negative 12 on each side. So think about which piece do you want to eliminate and what are you going to do to eliminate it? Okay, I'm going to take this guy here and if I add a chunk of positive 3x's, these are going to cancel and these will combine. Remember, we only combine the things that are alike. So on my paper, I'm going to add three X's to each side. And if, if I look back here, I've got no X's left here. I've just got 12 which is what I see here. 
On the right, nine X's plus three more X's is 12 X's minus four. So if I look at my hanger, this becomes 12 X's. And now I've got some a constant. I have these numbers here that I need to get rid of. So if it's negative four, I'm going to add positive four because that will kind of cancel. It'll eliminate from this side. That means I've got to, if I put that chunk on the right, I've got to put it on the left. So I'm going to add four to each side. Now I've got 16 equals 12 X's. So if I come back to my hanger, if I rewrite this, I've got 12 X's on the right and I've got 16 on the left. Now, if we think about the other hangers that we did, at this point, I would have broken up into 12 groups. Because if I break this into 12 groups and I break this into 12 groups, I've done the same thing on both sides, right? Break this into 12, break this into 12. The only thing is that doesn't divide very evenly, but that's okay because all I have to do is say divide each side by 12. I can show that with a fraction. Simplify it. And I get four thirds. You could even stop there unless, you know, you're entering something online. The hangers will be helpful for you to start kind of getting some ideas of how to keep everything balanced and stay mathematically correct. And that's it.